Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And if you ever wondered whether it is worth stacking full accuracy on a tank, well, I'm going to be asking that question, hopefully giving a few answers today on the ever-faithful Tier 10 German sniping tank destroyer. It is the Griller. But before we get stuck into the matter, just what am I using to be able to achieve 0.2 or sub 0.2 accuracy? So to be able to achieve this monster accuracy, you want to take an aiming device, Hopefully inside a firepower slot, unless you're using a bounty or bond aiming device would actually make this accuracy even more crazy than point two. On your gunner, you want to ensure you're taking concentration, which improves your accuracy by 4.45 with crew, skill being taken into account, and also armorer, which increases accuracy by 1.91. And then the real tricky decision on this vehicle is do you want to go all the way and actually make your reload 3% worse to make your accuracy 5% better, in addition to the 3% better accuracy that you can get from the second field mod? But that's really the question that I'm going to be asking is it worth stacking full accuracy? So with regards to using that directive, I believe that directive actually costs you bonds every single game. So unless you've got some from either playing Frontline or from some kind of wargaming event, that could be a very expensive way to play World of Tanks. I don't think I've ever actually been in a position where I've used, I've actually paid for bonds to be able to use a directive in a battle. Seems like a, a crazy way to, to play the game. On the other hand, I use the snapshot directive that you'll see. And that snapshot directive doubles the effect of snapshot for my crew. And on a tank like this that has horrible turret traverse dispersion, trust me, one of the best things you can do on your artillery and one of the best things you can do on a tank like this is make sure you've got snapshot to 100% and then use the snapshot directive. This will give it 15% reduced turret traverse dispersion and will allow you to be able to quickly engage your opponents. Add to this an experimental turbo and an exhaust you'll see there's a distinct lack of a gun rammer and that really is the big sacrifice that you have to make with a build like this. Not only am I losing 11% uh, rate of fire that I could have if I put a regular gun rammer inside a firepower slot, I'm losing that 3% rate of fire that we saw that you could take instead of the 5% accuracy in the garage. And in theory, you could go the other way, make this tank 5% less accurate, which would be like 10% total accuracy to gain 6% better rate of fire than you have here. And when you add that on to the, the gun rammer, then that's kind of like a 17% reload. That is large. That's kind of taking a tank and almost changing its class. But ladies and gents, when you're able to so reliably hit shots like this with a tiny little reticle, the big thing is, is that in World of Tanks, that you have to kind of hide between your shots. So what the idea of this build is, is just basically dump targets accurately at long range and make use of these awesome AP shells on this vehicle. And with a good crew skill, you see that I've actually managed to get my shell velocity on these AP shells using the, uh, the shell speed increase on your loader up to 1,348 making this feel as if it's more like an APCR round. And so you don't even have to give too much lead. And once you get used to it, boy, does that feel easy and satisfying. But I digress. I want to get back to the real uh, question here. And that is, how long do you have to hide in World of Tanks to be able to reset and be able to reload, right? It's the question as to why the Manticore does so well. In World of Tanks, when you fire, your camera rating plummets by like 80, 90%. And you generally get spotted unless you're outside the enemy's maximum spotting distance of 445 meters. So then you're spotted for between 10 and about 15 seconds, or in theory, 17 seconds, but that would be a very weird situation because they'd have to be using a radio set of equipment that nobody really uses. The reason why it's between 10 and 15 seconds is 10 seconds is the default. I guess you could get that down to nine if you were to take the, the commander skill, or is it the radio operator skill that reduces the amount of time that you're spotted. But let's just imagine you're not using that. You're spotted for 10 seconds. If they have designated target, a great crew skill and a must have on pretty much every single light tank, now it's 12 seconds. If they have good crew skills, it's more like 12 and a half seconds. And then if they use a directive, which will cost them, albeit like 20,000 credits a game, you're actually spotted for 15 seconds. And so that means that on a Gorilla, with a build like this, sure, you make your reload kind of like 16 seconds or so. But that's kind of the perfect time for you to fall back, hide, wait until you're no longer spotted, and then get back into position. And when you can dump a shell like that so accurately on a Progetto, 
apart from that first shot, this game, where we completely whiffed uh, off the Hori, I should have fired earlier or alternatively loaded heat to be able to go through kind of the structure of the tank. Then this gun just feels so good and being able to hit on maps like this feels amazing. So I guess the real problem... Oh, that's just delicious to be able to pinpoint the lower plate of the Hori there. The real problem that a tank like this will have is that not every map is Muravanka, right? Sometimes you have a medium tank come around the corner and is shooting you wildly and you need to re be able to reload the gun quickly to be able to get the shot in to the enemy tank. And that's what's beautiful about having two sets of equipment. This build that I don't use the gun rammer, I'll use on these ultra sneaky bushy maps where all of the engagement is long range and I have to hide between my shells to be able to reset. And then when I get on a map like Himmelsdorf, then maybe I'll use the rotation device so I can be a little bit more aggressive and snappy with my shots. I'll use a gun rammer so I can be able to get the shots in. And then it's up to you for a flex pick, maybe even use a durability device on this vehicle instead of using um, the experimental turbo on those close quarters combat maps. And so having a build like this, the only problem is, is that you can't change the, uh, the field mods inside the battle. So the real question is with this build is, is it worth sacrificing 3% rate of fire to gain 5% accuracy on one of the most accurate tanks already in the game? And I would argue it's a close one, but for me, at least on the Gorilla, yes, 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 yes. Being able to hit shots reliably means that you can take the RNG out of the game. And so you can adapt your play around the scenario that is being, well, that you're being faced with. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you don't really have a choice. You just got to go over, shoot the tank as quickly as possible and ugh, fall back. Maybe in that situation, it would have been better for me to shoot the, uh, the Ho-Ri. But I just thought, try and take one of the tanks out as quickly as possible. And oof, you know. Losing a thousand hit points to be able to get that reset with 10 seconds left now. Am I going to have to do it again against this SW1? We're loading a heat round here, so I'm hoping this heat is going to be able to go through his upper hull. And we're coming around the corner. Let's get him. And the heat actually bounces off that upper hull. That must have been more than 85 degrees of angled armor. Disaster bounce there against the SW1. We're up to 5,800 damage here, but we've still got a little bit more left if we want to be able to take this game down. And luckily, the Manticore does a sterling job from the other flank. So go up on the ridge line, look for an HE shell here against the WTF Panzer IV, and oh, it's just easy money. And with that shell velocity increase that you get, then you've still got 1,100 uh, meters a second with the HE. Really, that shell velocity increase on your loader is absolutely awesome on a vehicle like this. The only problem is, you know what? Uh, let's actually rewind that. Um, the problem is, is that when you make your tank incredibly accurate, um, uh, there's kind of no excuses for poor aim. Uh, let's slow it down to 16 times here, and you'll see that while my brain is aiming in the center of the SW1, I aim at the WT's barrel, and uh, it literally goes, yeah, you guessed it, when you got 0 0.2 accuracy, uh, the shell goes exactly where uh, I aim it, and um, yeah, it, it will uh, hit the WT's barrel, or hit one of the barrels there. I'm not sure if it's the E77's barrel, or I think it was the WT's barrel that the shell hits. So, um, yeah, spoilers, if you're aiming at the barrel of a tank, and you have 0.2 accuracy, uh, you can't blame RNG anymore, Uncle Scrubs. So bad aim by me there, and I fail one of the most important shots of the game. And now this game is neck and neck once again. The STB1 and the WT are alive, and I'm just praying the Manticore doesn't get shot by the WT. But hopefully, 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 uh, Cracky Babs isn't going to suck the second shot. Or as uh, Ike once famously said, suck the second sock, which was uh, a whole different kind of meaning. Luckily, this Manticore is putting in a huge game here. I send an invite to the Manticore, so hopefully we can get a Brothers in Arms medal. And now we've got that dirty HE round loaded for the WT Alpha Panzer IV. And it's still to play for, but um, yeah, with a Char on your team, who can hopefully go in and finish him off, should be good. But oh man, look at this. Just, oh, the gun just feels so good. So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was probably having as much fun in the Gorilla as I've had for a long time. And ironically, it was the first time that I decided to really drop that gun rammer and to use an aiming device on this tank. So would I recommend it? Would I recommend just going full accuracy on the uh, on the griller? 
yes, totally. I, I really enjoy it. The build is super fun and just clicking things at like hopefully 400, 500 meters, especially with the exhaust feels really good. The exhaust allows you to turn a tank that gets spotted super easily like an FE405 into being something more sneaky so that maybe you'll even be able to get the jump on mediums. Now let me clarify, you must use a premium consumable to make this build work, otherwise you're not going to have the view range uh, with this tank and you must have a good crew with recon, situation awareness, brothers in arms, etc, etc. However, would I recommend going full accuracy on kind of like every vehicle that you play in World of Tanks? No, not at all. A lot of tanks are not engaging at 400, 500 meters. A lot of tanks are engaging at short distances where it doesn't really matter if you have terrible accuracy. It's more about just getting shots out at your opponent. However, I want the final word to be that this might be overkill. I would have probably still hit 9 out of 10 of these shots if I'd had really good aim, um, even without going the full accuracy build. And, you know, maybe at times in this video, especially rewind to about the middle where there's an ST1, I believe, that just drives behind a building. If I'd had the gun rammer and maybe if I'd taken the rate of fire directive, uh, or should I say the, uh, the field mod to improve the rate of fire, maybe I would have got the extra hit in and hit that ST1 before they got around the corner. So it's kind of swings and roundabouts in a way. There'll be some situations you'll be better. There'll be some situations that you're worse. But I think the perfect tank to give it a go and to see what ultimate accuracy in World of Tanks feels like is the Griller. Unlike the STRV 103B, where if you go the full accuracy build, it really sucks because that tank is meant to be dumping rounds in every five seconds. This one, with that kind of snipe, retreat, reload, go back up when not spotted and do it all again, you, you can make a tank like this feel really good, especially on maps like Muravanka. So a smashing ace tank if here, the Gorilla, we hit 14 out of 15 shots with that one hitting the barrel, which is, to be fair, where I was aiming it, giving us 7,000 damage for a hard carry here. And because when you got this kind of accuracy, you don't usually need to be spamming gold with high penetration guns like the Gorilla, especially with that shell velocity, we even made a profit. And if you're interested in trying out the build that I use today, I'll give you a link to it on the awesome Tanks GG website. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for me today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about a maximum accuracy griller. And are there any other tanks in the game that you would employ this kind of a tactic? And if you're watching this video as it's released on Friday, I'm going live all day on twitch.tv forward slash quickiebaby with brand new drops tokens. So come and get your Halloween loot to get some of the best looking 3D styles in the game for your tier nine tanks. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.